Hello everybody, this is Philimba. Due to the unfortunate fact that I opened my big bout on a, commenting on a certain video that Metro 1991 made about a GameCube and someone commented to him about asking to do a Dreamcast review and unfortunately Metro 1991 doesn't have a Dreamcast and I opened my big mouth that I have a Dreamcast and I actually might do a review of it. Apparently Metro apparently later on, sometime a week later, he told me that I should do it right now, damn it. And guess what? I'm going to do a Dreamcast for just a hell of it, so... Yes, you're staring at a bed anyway. So let's get on with it, shall we? Get on with this! If you know what that reference is. Monty Python. Anyway. Okay, here's a box. You probably want some in this box, so let's put the camera over here. The unveiling shall begin! And I have a lot of crap in it. Let me move all this shit out. The controls are in the way. I know you really can't see it because I have to put the camera down. And now the camera is sideways. Alright. Here it is! The Dreamcast. Such a nice, interesting little piece of technology. Now, okay, on, but now I'm going to do a little brief history of the Dreamcast. Dreamcast was, of course, released in, uh, I'm trying to remember, September uh, 9th of 2000, um, no, not 2000, September 9th of 1999, I don't know why I said 2000. It's the first of the six generation consoles. And, of course, it's supposed to, and, of course, it basically had, you know, new, it was, it was awesome and new, and people were like, awesome, it was basically for hardcore gamers, and people were like, awesome, this is an awesome system. It had a lot of good games in the launch titles, like Soul, like Soul Calibur, uh, Sonic Adventure, uh, Jack Grant, well, not Jack, uh, oh, Crazy Taxi, I was going to say Jack Grant Radio, but I don't think that was part of the launch titles, but I'm not really sure. It's a, you know, it's, it's a successor to the Sega Center, which ultimately failed. And also the other peripherals that Sega come up with, including the 32X and the uh, piece of shit C Sega CD. And the only reason I'm saying the Sega CD is pretty bad because, you know, it's Sega CD. I mean, loading screens are terrible. Except Sonic CD, although I do heard that Sonic CD is a good game, but that's besides the point. We we're talking about the Dreamcast, and I already wasted two minutes. But anyway, so we're just going to, you know, talk, you know, show. Okay, first of all, there are four player slots. And the PS2 came out a year later, and they still only had two slots. So take note, Sony. Stop being retarded and do four slots, not two slots. Learn this from other people. I think they do this on the PS3 also, but I'm not really sure because I don't own a PS3. And uh, so here's the power button. This is where you push the power button, of course. And here's your little logo. And here is the open button. It opens uh, like a PS1. And yes, you're looking at a copy of Quake 3 Arena for the Dreamcast, which is actually my favorite Dreamcast game, even though it's a port of a PC game. And, of course, underneath it is, of course, uh, let's look at underneath it, shall we? I know this is a really bad review. Caution! Risk of electric shock do not open. And, of course, there's the fan underneath it. And, of course, here's the interesting part. This is actually the first system that has a built-in modem. Which you can play online, which I think it's really one of the neat features of the Dreamcast. The Sega Net's actually pretty neat, actually, although you do have to pay subscription. Sadly, the Sega Net unfortunately discontinued last year, which is actually pretty sad, but of course, there's always private servers, which of course Sega will allow, I guess, and they don't really care. And this is where the AV outputs, and there's the little fan part thing, is, and yeah, that's about it. There's your little outputs and crap. So yeah, it's, pretty good. it's a pretty good system. It's got a nice, good library of games and stuff. You know, it, it's made for, it's Sega's last console. It's a pretty good console. In fact, there's actually independent companies in Japan still making homebrew games to the Dreamcast. And as a matter of fact, the last Dreamcast game we have in America was was a sports was a hockey game back in 2002 in February. And Japan didn't stop making games for the Dreamcast until 2006. Really? Why couldn't they do that in America? I mean, come on. I mean, granted, probably because, you know, we have these new systems like the Xbox and the GameCube and the PS2 battling it out, and unfortunately, Dreamcast was, since it was really Sega's fault to cut the Dreamcast short, this light span, it's a pretty sad thing, in my opinion. So, alright, now let's go check out the control, which I do like, actually. Here is the control. This is what a Dreamcast controller looks like. As you probably notice, it's kind of weird looking. It has the X button, there's the Y button, there's the uh, A and B. Very similar to a Super Nintendo, actually. And, of course, there's only one joy the joysticks at the top, and there's a directional pad and only two shoulder pads. A little bit different than the, uh, 
than the PS2 or PS1 controller that some people usually use to actually, whoever owned Playstations, or the N64 controller for that matter, and the GameCube controller, which, but anyway, um, this is, the only bad thing about the Dreamcast controller is, uh, it's very hard to play a first person shoot game, because the funny thing is, you actually have to use these buttons to move, strapping with these two buttons, and move forward with this button, move back, and you actually have to look around with this button, and you actually switch over with this button. That's how shooters normally do with this particular controller. It's kind of confusing, but it's really kind of easy to get used to. And of course, platforming games are also pretty easy to use, and so are fighting games for this thing. And of course, now we're going to look at the memory card, which i got to look for my other controller, because I want to make this short as I possibly can. Let me put this down so I can unwind this thing. And I'm going to take this whole thing out. This is what a Dreamcast memory card looks like. Yes, it has its own little screen. The screen, actu the LCD screen actually serves some purpose, like, like when you start a game, it actually shows the name of the game, which actually looks kind of cool. And there is actually some features, like, for example, if you're playing a racing game, also, uh, it makes a little fa also you can put little face symbols on it when you save games and stuff. Uh, when you play, like, a racing game, for example, they actually show, like, a dot, like, in the middle where you are, and it actually shows your opponents. It's kind of, it acts like a radar, but pretty useless. It also has a D-pad for no apparent reason. Um, I really, to be honest with you, I think the D-pad and the B and A button, there's really no uses for it. Maybe there were uses for it. I'm not really sure what kind of use for it. And yes, there's actually, uh, and yes, every time you pl start to drink, it makes this really horrible beeping noise. Yeah, it's one of the, uh, one, one of, I think really the only annoying thing about the Dreamcast, so. Yes, I, I think really the Dreamcast gets points for having the most coolest, uh, memory card ever. It's a neat little memory card. I like the memory card of this thing. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that's about it. So, there you go. There you have it. Um, I might as well give points for it anyway, and I'm out of a scale of 1 to 10. It's just the hell of it. This is how as much as I can explain, since I really suck at reviewing, and I really never meant to review hardware systems at all, but just for hell of it, I give the Dreamcast a 7 out of 10. Yes. Nice system. It's a cult phenomenon. They're very hard to find, so if you still have a Dreamcast, don't sell it. Keep it. It's good and it's precious, just like me. Well, yeah, me alone. You know, just like my Dreamcast, because, you know, I still play mine. Mine still work anyway. You know, if you want to see a little demonstration, uh, I made a very response to uh, the Devil, um, not Devil May Cry, why the hell is it, the, uh, Devil Alive uh, 2 uh, demo I did. Just go click down over here, which is video response, check it out, you know, which I think it's probably one of the best looking Dreamcast games ever, so check it out. So anyway, this is Phil Nubba, signing out. Goodbye.